The water energy connection. How is water use related to energy use? Why is energy needed for water? When water is needed for energy, is one liter equivalent regardless of how it is used? These are the questions that we'll be addressing in this video. In developed countries, water and energy use can be closely connected, especially if processes rely on industrial era methods. For example, in the United States, every million gallons of treated water delivered requires 300 to 3,800 kilowatt hours of electric energy. 80 to 90 percent of this energy is used simply for pumping the water. Extraction, transformation, and delivery of energy in turn requires water. Let's look at two cases. Energy in the form of electricity and energy in the form of fuels. In both cases, the delivery requires an insignificant amount of water compared to the extraction and transformation steps, so we'll just focus on extraction and transformation. With respect to a life cycle picture, we are only considering the water input for the equivalent of material production and manufacture of the energy. In terms of the water footprint, we are neglecting the water needed to absorb the pollutant load, that is, the gray water. In some cases, the gray water load may be as much as the water input required. Here's a look at the use of water to extract and transform energy resources to electricity. The vertical axis represents the liters of water per gigajoule of energy extracted. The horizontal axis represents liters of water per gigajoule of electricity transformed. So energy resources in the bottom left represent the least water used in the combined processes. You can think of processes lying on an arc of equivalent radius as being equivalent in the amount of water used per gigajoule of electricity produced. Notice that electricity from photovoltaics require the least water per gigajoule, while in general, fossil fuels and nuclear power represent the largest water consumed per gigajoule electricity produced. Coal and geothermal are about the same. Hydroelectric uses about an equivalent amount of water per gigajoule produced as fossil fuels if you consider the water that is evaporated from the open surface of a body of water. Evaporation from bodies of water is a natural process, and you might ask yourself if, even though the quantity of water used per gigajoule is the same, is the quality of the use equivalent? For example, evaporation removes water from water reservoirs, but this water would be removed anyway because of the nature of a reservoir. In fossil fuel transformation, water is contaminated and requires energy to treat the water. For this case, you can see that the water footprint tool would be helpful because it would consider the whole life cycle water needs as well as distinguish between the type of water needed. When we consider a comparison of liquid fuels, we see that the most water intensive fuels are the biofuels. For these fuels, the majority of the water is required in the growth stage for the soy and corn crops. As with the case for electricity, it's important to consider not just the quantity of water used per fuel production, but also the impact of the water use. Again, the water footprint tool would be helpful. These data illustrate that one must use reflective judgment and systems thinking when considering numbers. The numbers only tell part of the story. In this case, the data show the connection between energy production and water use, but they only tell part of the story since it neglects the water needed to deal with the emissions from the extraction and transformation processes. In developed countries that rely on industrial era technologies, water use is closely tied to energy use. In the United States, most of the energy used in water treatment is for pumping. Energy production, storage, and delivery requires water. The amount of water required per quantity of energy produced varies widely depending on the energy resource. However, one liter of water consumption is not equivalent in its impact when it excludes the water needed to assimilate toxic emissions associated with the consumption. Therefore, it's critical to use reflective judgment when examining and comparing data.